Hello everyone, welcome back to another train video. My name is Hiram, and we're going to be taking a look at this Cato N-Scale D51-200 steam locomotive. So, I came across this locomotive uh, browsing on Amazon, looking for uh, an N-Scale locomotive that would be interesting to buy, and I found this. Um, I had to get it shipped all the way from Japan. So it's not the Kato USA stuff, it's actually Japanese packaging and all that stuff. Um, the instruction paper that comes inside of it is in uh, Japanese characters. Um, the only reason I know is because I did want to take a little sneak peek of it before uh, making this video. Um, just because I was so excited to see it. I haven't tested it yet, and I haven't... Uh, done anything with the details yet, but um, I am super excited to finally uh, get to show this to you guys and to finally see how it works on my track. Anyway, um, as I'm unboxing this, I'm going to tell you a little something special about this particular locomotive. Um, some of you who have seen uh, Thomas and Friends might know of a character called Hero. Um, and I believe this is the locomotive that Hero is based off of in the, um, Thomas and Friends show. Um, as you can see, we're gonna go over the details here in a little bit, but, um, you can probably already tell from the side profile how much it actually <laughs> looks like Hero from the show. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the paper now. Um, we're not going to be able to read any of it because it's all in characters. But yeah, it shows you how to put on some of the details that come with it, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then how to replace the coupler, um, which I am going to have to do. Um, for it to be compatible with my other stuff. Uh, the back is also, it's also in characters, but it's a uh, parts list of all the, all the parts <laughs> that come with the locomotive, if you ever need to replace anything. Um, anyway, alright, let's put that back in. And let's get it out of this foam packaging. Actually, let's go over this first. So here we have all the details that you can put on. Uh, it has uh, number boards, and then there are the extra couplers in there for the front and for the back. There's uh, whatever that thing is. Don't know. We'll have to see what it is. Um, anyway, that's basically what comes in, and there are a bunch of empty slots on the locomotive that do not have those parts yet. So, um, I'm actually going to take this out and put it on a sort of turntable that I made. Let me show you guys. So, I designed and 3D printed uh, a turntable for it. This is actually only part of it. Um, the rest of it didn't really work very well, but I found out that this by itself sh still should work as a sort of device to turn the locomotive around and see all the details. So, anyway, I'm going to get the locomotive on there so we can look at all the details. We're going to just... So with here, you can actually open the foam up like this and then lift the locomotive out of foam. There we go. Set everything to the side. Okay, and then we're just gonna try our best to align it on this little track cutout that I sort of have in it. Make sure this side is also lined up. Let's get it kind of centered on there so the turntable actually works. Okay, so now we have it on my little turntable. And let's see if I can angle. Nope, the camera won't angle. Okay. So, 
yeah, I just have it on this turntable so we can look at all the details. Um, hopefully you can still see all of them. Um, but as, as as I turn this around, I'm going to point out all of the details that kind of uh, translate into Hero's design in the Thomas and Friends uh, show. So, um, as you can see, first of all, you can uh, notice the wheel configuration um, and the placement of the rods and everything are all um, the same as Hero, of course. And then this dome right here, this is very distinctly shaped uh, dome, and it's very, very similar to Hero's design. Also, the running board, the way it comes up right here, that's a uh, very noticeable de uh, design in Hero. Uh, also, these, whatever these are. Sorry, I'm not super learned in the train terminology. Um, but anyway, let's see if we can focus on the front. So, now we have these... Um, I used to know what these were called. I used to know what these are called. But he has these side panels. Um, I believe they're for aerodynamics. But Hero does have these side panels. And he does have his nameplate um, on here. It's actually up towards the top, I think. Not down here. But anyway. And then another thing is this cylindrical piece on top of the smoke box. Um... I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, on top of the smoke box, and um, which is also very distinct. All of the d these details are very distinct to Hero. And if we go around more, um, if we focus on the cylinders, actually the cylinder cylinders down here, they are actually very very close to Hero's design with the way that they're shaped. And with the with the wheel, the valve wheel, or whatever that's for. I have never seen a wheel on a piston before. But anyway, just the way everything is shaped brings me to believe that this is the actual locomotive that Hero is based off of. Here we have another place where the running board uh, comes up over some more details right here. And... Uh, you know, the tender is also very similar to how his tender, tender appears in the show. Um, just everything about this locomotive points to it being the base locomotive for Hero. So now let's go over some of the um, other details, if I can get this a little bit closer. Okay, so I've transferred it over to this piece of track that I had left over from building my layout. Um, so now we can get a little bit closer, hopefully. Hold on. Hey, we can zoom in. Okay, we're zoomed in now. So now you can see all those details up close. Um, and then that handrail, I believe, is separately fitted. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And then we have some piping that's molded in, um, but it still looks very good, especially for end scale. Then we have some more, uh, we have these things, they've been picked out in some paint, very good. The, the dome has a valve here, looks very good, I think it is plastic, but... It still looks very good. And then there's these pipes here that lead to the dome. I don't know what this silver part is. Um, granted, I don't know what a lot of these things are on this locomotive because um, I don't know a lot of terminology. And also, it is a foreign locomotive um, that I don't know about. And then here we can see that piston more clearly and probably compare it to Hero's pistons. Um, same with the cylindrical thing right there. And um, there's a couple of other valves right here. And I think those ones are actually made of metal. Um, and they look very good. 
I also have some more details up here that look very good. I don't know if they're separately fitted. They look like they're separately fitted. And we got some more handrails on the cab right here. And we have this sort of um, hatch uh, that doesn't open on this model, but it does appear that it would, which is very good. Taking a look more towards the front of the locomotive, um, you can see the, I think there's more separately fitted handrails. Whoa. Yeah, those are definitely separately fitted, and they look very good too, very fine. Um, we have the smoke box door handle right here. Um, uh, somewhere to step, maybe? And then we have a front dummy coupler and a coupler pull bar um, that doesn't move, but it still looks very good. And then we can also see a headlight up here. I wonder if that'll work um, while it's running. Um, it doesn't look likely, but it would be super cool if it did. And then we can see that cylindrical piece on top of the smoke box right there. Coming around to the other side, it's about the same, except there is um, this piece right here. I don't know what that's for. Hopefully you guys can help me out with a little bit. And then there's also some piping that's been picked out in a sort of gold color. Um, so it is just a little bit different on this side. Same sort of three-way piping that we had on the other side of the locomotive. Um, and then we have a reverser rod right here. I'm positive that that's a reverser rod. And then we have... Uh, some sort of different sort of details right here where the running board moves up and um, also not sure what those are for but um, it still looks very cool and then we have a bunch of complicated piping down there which looks very good for sure don't know what any of that is for probably said that many times all right, I found a very bright light source, um, but now we can see the details in the cab, which look good. They're not painted or anything, but they look very good. This locomotive uh, stands at a price point of, I think, $100 on Amazon, and it's it looks very good. Um... And, of course, Kato makes probably the best products in the N-Scale model train industry. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, tender now. Um, there's really not much to see, actually, with the tender. Um, unlike the locomotive, it's actually very plain. Um, the coal load still looks good, though. Um, it's very nice coal. And we have the bogies down here, the trucks, and then on the back we have another light. Uh, I doubt this one will work, as we saw with the GS4 Daylight locomotive, um, its headlights uh, or taillights didn't work either, um, but that's still cool to see some detail put into it. Um, and then there's also what seems to be steps. No handrails or sort of ladder to really hold on to. Um, and that's about it for the detail of the tender. It's not very detailed. Um, I guess we could look at the at this part. I guess there's a lot more detail in there. But it's not much to look at because it'll be running and we're not really going to see any of the cab detail or the tender detail, really. 
Alright, hopefully you weren't bored to death by the details segment. Um, I think we're going to go over what's in this uh, bag now. And so I'll just go ahead and dump everything out, see what we have, um, show everything to you guys. Alright, so we have this detail. Okay. So we have this sort of detail, which I think is upside down. Um, very, very good looking. I, from what I saw in the instructions, it looks like it goes on the front of the locomotive. It doesn't look like we have to put it on. It looks fine without it. And I don't think I'm going to put it on because, because I don't really care. I guess I'll save it for later. Okay, and we get two different options for number boards, and I just realized, picking them up and showing them to the camera, uh, that they both say D51200, which I think is just the name of the locomotive, so I'm not sure if these are actually real running numbers that the locomotive would have, um, but that's cool how they give us two different colors. I think I'm going to go with the red. Um, just because I want something to break up the sort of, uh, main black scheme that it has. And there's also already some reddish details that you could see on there, so I feel like the red would be very fitting. And then we have this coupler that you can put on the front. Um, not the kind of coupler that I like to use, um, but... It's an option for if you want to couple the front of the locomotive to anything. Here's a different coupler, um, but it's for the same end of the locomotive, because that dummy coupler will not connect to anything. Then we have a replacement coupler for the back of the locomotive. Um, just a basic, typical Kato coupler, as you can see. And... Um, I think I'm going to try and replace the back coupler with this. There are instructions on how to do this. I can only understand what the visuals are trying to tell me, not the characters. Um, so it is just a little bit confusing for me. Uh, but I'll still try my best to replace the coupler in the back with this one. Alright, well, here's the locomotive without the number plates. And there it is with the number boards. You probably can't tell the difference very much besides the cab. But I'll zoom in for you guys and show you guys where all the number plates went. So, we have one here on the cab, which does make it look a whole lot better. And then I was wrong about the panels getting number boards uh, that's just a, an empty hole for some reason don't know why um, that's part of the design but yeah yeah it's just an empty hole no number plate goes in there so then we have a number plate on the smoke box door which looks very good it already makes it look a whole lot better, which I know I already said, uh, but it really does. It really does. Here's the other side of the cab. Then the back of the tender gets one too, which upgrades the detail by a whole lot on this tender, as plain as it is. Let me tell you, those number plates were actually very hard to put on by hand. They are very small and they're very easy to lose, but I did manage to get them all pushed in. I didn't have to glue them, uh, which is good because um, I might want to replace them. Um, well, I don't think I'll want to replace them, but in case I ever do replace them, it'll be nice to be able to remove them uh, without having to worry about glue. Anyway, uh, that's probably about it for the detail. Unless we want to go over replacing the coupler, which will be a fun process because I do not understand the instructions. Um, but I think we're just going to give it a shot. So let me just show you the visual that it has right here. Of course, I can't read any of the characters, but um, it shows me here 
something about this um, part of the truck that I need to remove, and I think um, we need to use a flathead screwdriver to move these clips out of the way so we can take it off. Um, I don't know what the forward motion means. Um, maybe we need to move the truck forward once we remove that part of it. I have no idea, guys. We're just going to find out. And then here, um, it shows us that you can replace the coupler. And we're just going to figure it out as we go. So hopefully we don't break anything. Alright, so I have the whole locomotive uh, placed in its foam packaging. Um, I have it upside down um, because the packaging does actually do a very good job at holding it in place. And so I'm just using the packaging as a sort of a foam holder. I don't know what those things are actually called that people put their locomotives in to work on them. But yeah, I just have my locomotive upside down in its packaging and it's staying in place very well. And I have the camera zoomed in the truck that we're, we need to remove for the coupler. So hopefully you guys can follow along because these instructions are no use to an American <laughs> as they are in Japanese characters. Anyway, you know what, I'm going to flip it around. Maybe I can get that other clip more easily. Well, maybe I did get it. Here. I'm going to try and pry up on it. Yep. I think we got it. So I have that clip right here undone, and I'm starting to lift it up here. And I'm going to have to undo that one again. And we have this base off. So that's what it looks like without the base. So I'm going to set it to the side. And we're going to get it repositioned. So let's see what they're talking about with moving it forward. So moving it forward probably brings it out. Yep. So yeah, you gotta shift it forward and then pull it out. And we can see some contact. See from some contacts right here that push into the chassis. And now I think we have access to this coupler. Um not sure how we're supposed to remove it. Let me look back on the instructions. Yeah, I don't... I didn't get anything else from the instructions, so I think we're... Oh, it just pops out. Cool. Alright. Now we have the coupler. We have access to it. And it's held on by this pin. And this spring. And I'm gonna go off camera, just so I don't lose the spring with the coupler, but I'll show you guys what I did once I'm done. Alrighty, I got the uh, new coupler on. It's actually not that hard. So I pulled out the um, other coupler, pulled out this one, and I didn't actually have to hold on to the spring because it's already held in by this pin at the base. So it was easy to pull out, but when you put in the new coupler, you're going to have to pull the spring back so that it will, so that you can get this pin to line up correctly uh, with the coupler and the spring. If you can see what I mean here. All right, now we're gonna put everything back together. So let's start with the coupler. I'm gonna set it down here. And push it in to place. Very good. Now we're just going to get this bogey. And put it back in. Hopefully it's the right way. Yep. Okay. And now we're going to put this base 
back on the right way. I'm just going to push it on, make sure. I'm pretty sure it's in all the way. Okay. So now we have that all done. Easier than I thought it would be. Um, you just have to figure it out and be really good at reading pictures. <laughs> Alright guys, this video is actually getting to be a little bit long, so we're not going to run the train in this video. But I will start working on part 2 right after this and start running the train, testing it, uh, checking out the performance. Until then, it's goodbye. We'll see you in the next one.